I can hardly describe the pleasure in receiving a letter, especially a thank you letter, and knowing that someone is thinking about you and appreciating what you do. The delight in receiving something through the post is immense and you can have just as much joy designing the letter or card. It's a win-win situation. Letters and cards have been winging their way between people forever. But now we can type something, press a button and send and receive in an instant. The art of sending letters is becoming a bit lost. It's time to rediscover the love of sending and receiving letters and cards to each other. And one great way to do that is by making and sending a very special type of card. To infinity and, well, you know the rest. But did you know about infinity cards? Sometimes called never-ending cards or flexagons. They're a great way to design a really imaginative and fun thank you card. They're... A bit like a piece of origami, but they fold in different ways to reveal different sides. And you can put your own designs, words, drawings, photographs, even textiles on each of the different sides. They're really quite magical and an opportunity to be super creative. You'll find a blank card in the pack alongside instructions on how to use it. Anybody receiving your magical infinity thank you card will feel so cherished and appreciated. If you get the bug and want to make more, there are lots more examples on the internet. Take a look at flexagon.net as this site shows lots of different shapes for you to make. There are lots of fun decisions to make about the style of your infinity card. And one piece of advice would be to have a theme. For example, if you're saying thank you to somebody who loves birds, then the words and the pictures could reflect that. Oh, speaking of words, when you have your words, be that a straightforward thank you style letter or a poem or other creative way of saying thank you, you need to decide where to put the words in the infinity card. You might want to split the text up so the words are on different panels in the card or they may all be in a block on the same panel, perhaps in the middle, so it's really noticeable. You may put some pictures in between the words or keep the text as one running piece. Are you going to handwrite the text straight onto the card in pen or or pencils, in black, or use some colour? Or are you going to type out the text, having fun with fonts and colours, and stick it onto the card? Oh, choices, choices, choices! So that's the words. What about the images? Well, it's your card, so you get to make the decisions. For drawings, think about your materials. Have a good old rummage through your pencil case and art materials. That gel pen might just be the perfect thing. Or felt tips, colouring or shading pencils if you want to create a black and white image. And steer clear of materials that smudge, such as charcoal or wax crayons. And if using um, watercolour pencils or felt tips, make sure the picture is dry before you move on to another panel. You might love doing collage work, so get the scissors and glue ready because an infinity card is just perfect for collage. You only need small pieces of paper to create the collage. So raid the recycling bin for old magazines or comics, which are full of suitable pictures. If you're going for patterns, the inside of some envelopes might reveal some exciting colours and patterns. Oh, and wrapping paper is great for that too. Don't forget newspapers, clean food and drink packaging, postcards, greeting cards, and even the see-through windows on old envelopes. If you want a very neat effect, cutting out with scissors works best. But for those more uneven edges, just tear the pictures. And a combination of both styles can work well too, because you can layer collage pieces on top of each other, having drawn pictures poking through. Make a mosaic with tiny pieces of coloured paper and you can stick your pieces in a way that creates a particular shape too. Now, think about the background of the panels as well. Using a white or light coloured pencil to add some detail and fine marks can just add to the overall effect of it and give it a a kind of super professional finished look. The overall aim is to make a card that reflects what you want to say to somebody by adding a bit of extra va-va-voom to the card. So try to match the images to the words in some way to create an overall look that is amazing and gorgeous. Well, that's the card bit, but we have to send it now. And that starts with the envelope. Most envelopes are pretty boring, aren't they? White or brown with just the address on it. Well... Let's shake that up a bit too. 
So long as the postie can read the address clearly, you can put designs on your envelope as well. You could continue the theme from the actual card or add some fun doodles. You can decorate the front and the back of the envelope. Just make sure you leave a bit of space around the stamp because that goes through some kind of machine at the post office. But you could make the stamp part of your design. If it's a standard stamp with the Queen's head on, you could draw the rest of her underneath. If it's one of the special stamps, you could add to that picture too, or draw your own version of the theme. Why not write a quick thank you to the postal workers involved in the delivery of the cards somewhere as well? Or how about a hand-drawn map of the person's house to help them find the letterbox more easily? An envelope is a perfect opportunity to get a bit funky and creative and sets the tone for what's inside. Now, it's time to send your card or other type of thank you letter. If you want the card to get there quickly, you should use a first class stamp. But if it can take its time and have a bit more of a leisurely journey, opt for a second class stamp. It's a little bit cheaper. If your envelope is a bit bigger than standard or weighs a bit more, then that's called a large letter and you have to buy a slightly more expensive stamp. It's always worth just checking at the post office. Or you can also check online by searching royalmail.com. So, you've made your card or letter, it's snuggled into its illustrated and personalised envelope, you've stuck a stamp on it and waved it off on its journey by putting it in the red post box. Time to sit back and think, job done? No. Hopefully, you'll have got the letter writing bug. Why not make some more infinity cards? After all, infinity gives you plenty of time to make more. Make your own envelopes as well as putting designs on them. If you take one to pieces, you can actually use it as a template to make others out of any chosen paper. Send more thank you cards. Think of all the people out there that you'd like to thank. Perhaps start writing to someone you would normally email or text. Swap a few of those texts for a lovely letter that they can keep and cherish. We can choose our words and images much more carefully in a letter or get a totally new pen pal from anywhere in the world. Sit down with an adult and have a look for trusted agencies that offer that service. I still keep in touch with my Finnish pen pal 40 years after first writing to her. A letter doesn't even have to be on paper or in an envelope. You could send a piece of material you think someone would like to frame. All it needs is an address written clearly on the back and an appropriate stamp. You can send items through the post directly. Did you know that? Just make sure you stick or tie the address on really securely. Imagine receiving a rubber duck through the post with your name and a stamp stuck on it. Why not? I'll bet the person receiving that will keep it forever. All of this just goes to show what fun you can have with a letter in general and a thank you letter in particular. Your imagination has taken over and you're sending something that will mean so much to the recipient. So the message is think beyond the normal. Be led by your imagination and share something personal and creative. Make this the start of a very exciting letter writing journey and you'll get the stamp of approval.